What's up everybody, welcome back to the workshop. I wanted to start 2025 by doing a quick little video on CNC retrofitting. I know that it's a new year and a lot of people have big goals for their shops and machining. And one of those things might be, for a very small niche of people, a CNC retrofit. So let's start off by talking a little bit about what machines will make a good retrofit. Really quickly, I've spent a lot of time looking on classifieds here locally in Utah, Facebook Marketplace, and eBay, just looking for machines and stuff. And I feel like I've gotten a pretty good handle on what would make a good retrofit. So the first thing that you wanna look at, obviously, is is there a machine near you? You don't wanna pay, in my opinion, you probably don't wanna pay to have a machine rigged all the way across the country because more than likely there's a machine somewhere close that is gonna fit your needs for a retrofit. So in my opinion, I think there's a lot of Haas machines out there that are good retrofits. There's a lot of Fadals. If you're looking at lathes, the old Moris, the green ones, and the Okumas are probably really good candidates because they're super rigid and they have super good thermal stability. Um, my machine that I have here that I did my first retrofit on is a Cincinnati Aero. And there were a lot of parts for Cincinnati Arrows on eBay back when I did my retrofit. I completed my retrofit in 2020. And just in those four years, a lot of the spare parts for arrows on eBay have been gobbled up. So get on eBay, look and see, can you, I mean, you can still get a lot of replacement parts for a Haas. That is such uh, a good way to go in my opinion. I think there's a lot of Fidal parts. There's a lot of user forums and things that you'll be able to find parts for Fidal. Um, I don't know if I would go the route of Japanese. When I did my Mazak horizontal retrofit, I could tell that they were gonna be a harder company to work with to get parts. So if anything happens to that Mazak, I'm probably screwed. Uh, I've already had like a cylinder go out and an air filter and a couple things on this arrow, and I was able to find them on eBay and source them and have them shipped. That's something to think about. Can you get parts for your retrofit? Okay, so what makes a good machine retrofit? When you are doing your due diligence, I would go to the place if you can. Go to the place in person, take your dial indicator. I show up with my dial indicator or uh, my finger indicator and I show up with a tape measure to see how big it is. And obviously you're gonna wanna have your phone and a notepad to take some notes with. Do as, get in and research the machine in person as much as you can. If the owner of the machine is okay with you seeing it under power, um, see if there's backlash in the ball screws. If you can, a really big thing I would consider is run out in the spindle. Take your indicator, put it up inside of the spindle taper, twist, turn it around, see if there's any run out inside of that spindle. And because you, you'll be extra money if you have to pull the spindle, send it out to be reground and brought back in. You can deal with a little bit of backlash in the ways, but make sure they're tight. Make sure there's not a lot of slop, you know, in X moving in Y or Y moving in X. If you can, put your hand up on the spindle. See if you can lift it, you know, see if Z has movement in it. My Z has a little bit of, I don't know what you would call it, but kind of sag, it pops. But luckily for me, my Z still cuts really true and I still get really good 3D profiling. So just something to keep in mind when you are looking at your machine in person. How much should you pay for a potential retrofit? So I got both of these machines for essentially free. I think I paid 1200 for the Mazak and then I had to ship it here. So it was like four grand for rigging, which I did myself, rent a forklift and all that stuff, which I think if you have experience running heavy machinery, go ahead and rig it yourself. You know, hire a tow truck or somebody who's licensed to do it. Don't try and haul it on your home trailer. So let's talk about my Aero Retrofit because I think it's, it's probably the most applicable for most people. You're probably gonna be doing a CNC vertical for your Retrofit. And I would recommend, you know, 
I, I love the Mazak, but I use the crap out of my vertical because I do a lot of job shop stuff. I mean, it's easier to set up, it's easier to take down, and I can just do a ton of different variety of parts on it. If I had a fourth axis on it, it would be such a versatile machine. Uh, the, the Arrow is my money maker. It makes, it's my bread and butter, it makes money all day long. The cost for a retrofit. You're gonna have the cost of the initial machine. I think you can find a good retrofit Cat 40 machine I would look for the one grand to four grand price range if you can't get it for free. I think if you're spending like 10 grand on a machine that you're gonna retrofit, that's too much money. I mean, you can buy, you can buy a new Haas tool room mill for like, you know, 50 or, or one of the new drill tap Haas's for like 50. You don't wanna spend that kind of money on a retrofit. So I would say one to maybe 5,000 on the machine to get it maybe two grand for rigging and then plan on 10 to 15,000 for all the electronics drives things that you're going to need for the retrofit okay what things are you going to need for your cnc retrofit you're going to need uh the components for kind of the brain you know the controller for me all i can speak to is centroid and I cannot say enough good things about Centroid. I love my Centroid retrofits. So you're gonna be looking at about probably two grand for the board. You're gonna to have to pay for software, which will be, you know, maybe seven to a thousand. Uh, the MPG, a probe if you want it, you're looking at maybe another 1500 there. And then don't forget about all of the things that you'll need when you do your retrofits. You're gonna need a bunch of wire. You're gonna need contactors. You're gonna need uh, snubbers and things like that you'll need wire guides there's just there's a lot of things if you want to make it nice that you're not going to be thinking about so figure in a little bit of extra cost I think you can probably do a really nice cat 40 retrofit for 15 to twenty thousand dollars how long will a retrofit realistically take you to complete so I had no real knowledge of all of the wiring and schematics and everything that goes into a retrofit. So you've got to digest pretty much all of this. You've got to know the controller, you've got to program your drives, you've got to run all of the wires, solder them. It is not a small undertaking to do a retrofit your first time. I think you should realistically plan on six months to a year to have your retrofit up and running, especially if you're doing it on nights and weekends. It will take a lot of time. There's little things to figure out. There's just, there's a lot to it. And I think it's even better documented now. So maybe we could cut that time down to six months, depending on the board you use. Uh, the components you use, how well documented your drives and stuff like that are, it could take you more or less time. Some of the biggest pitfalls, could I redo it again, that I would do, I would buy a hickory board, 100% I would go with the hickory board, and I would use the ethercap function. Doing the, doing the drive wires for both of my retrofits took me a huge amount of time. And then lack of documentation for some of my drives cost me a lot of time. So messing with that kind of stuff, uh, putting drives in that didn't necessarily have the best documentation. So I would go with a hickory board. I would go with the Ethercat drives. I would probably go with Delta or Yaskawa, something that they've used that they've really proved out on the Centroid website. I love my C2000 uh, spindle drive. But here again, find something that's really well documented. I don't feel like the rigid tapping is super good, so I thread mill everything. If you want rigid tapping, find something that is really well documented on rigid tapping. That's probably my biggest complaint. And then you're going to you know, have the time spent on the tool change, the macros that you might have to figure out. You may have to pay somebody to make specific macros for your machine. So just kind of figure those things in. All right, last thing. Can you make money with a CNC retrofit? I am gonna have to say yes, because that's all I have. But this machine at a, I probably, 
I probably, when it was all said and done, was into my retrofit about fifteen to seventeen thousand dollars. And obviously, there's other things that you buy for your machine: probe, uh, tooling. You've got your vices, and then carbide coolant. There's all these little things that you don't think about that add up. But I would say that if you can find somebody who will pay you, or if you can get work from Zometry, you could expect to pay off your mill in the first year of running it. Now you're gonna have a steep learning curve. CNC machining is not easy. It's hard to learn all the different materials and things like that. But I, in my heart of hearts, believe that if you want a good low overhead option, you're not trying to feed your family with this thing, um, but if you want a good low overhead option that could potentially make you money and you're willing to take a little bit of a risk on an older machine, a CNC retrofit is a great move for somebody who is trying to get into CNC machining. What I would not do is take out a loan and mortgage your house or something and bet it on a CNC retrofit. If you're going to go the route of starting a business and it's going to be your sole source of income, go get a Haas. You cannot beat Haas financing 84 months. There's just, I, I honestly, if I could redo it again, I would have looked harder at Haas. I mean, the financing options are better. They have cheaper, good Cat 30, Cat or BT 30, Cat 40 options for an entry level machine. And Haas is a great way to go. So many people build their businesses and like a Haas vertical machine is gonna make you a ton of money. So look at that, look at a Tormach, look at the new Siles, an X5 in your garage will make you a ton of money. You could pay that off, you know, it's 30 grand. So do your due diligence. If you can get a machine for free like I did, I would say go for it. Rig that sucker wherever you can put it. Be very careful with your electricity. You're gonna need three phase for a lot of these things. You're dealing with high amperage, you know, 30 to 50 amps on something this size. So be very careful. Uh, always lock your machine out, but have fun and check out Centroid. I think they make great tools for people looking to do CNC retrofits. And if you're starting a retrofit and you want any advice or anything, go ahead and leave a comment or contact me directly and let's chat. Hope you're having a great year and I will see you next time. Take care.